a man ran a newspaper ad for a system that guaranteed to cut any and all of your bills in half. The system cost only $29.95. But upon investigation, the authorities discovered that for that $29.95, plus shipping and handling, of course, the man would send the people a $3 pair of scissors. He was subsequently arrested for mail fraud. All around we see a world out of control, a world where success, money, and self-gratification mean everything, where betrayal is easy, and family and commitment finish last where integrity is just a word found in a dictionary, where the fraud is more pervasive than ever because the perpetrators lurk not just in the shadows, but right out in plain sight. Sometimes makes us want to shout, okay, that's enough. Everyone back to square one, let's start this thing over again. Christ set the example that we need. Long ago, there was a ruler in Persia, a wise and, and good king. He loved his people. He wanted to know how they lived. He wanted to know about their hardships. So often he would dress in the clothing of a working man or, or a beggar. And he would visit the homes of the poor. No one he visited had any inkling that, that, that he was their ruler. One time he visited a very poor man who lived in a cellar. He ate the coarse food the poor man ate. He spoke cheerful, kind words to him. Then he left. Later he went back to visit this poor man again, and this time he disclosed his identity by saying, I, I'm actually your king. The king thought the man would then surely ask for some gift or favor, but he did not. Instead, he said, you left your palace and your glory to visit me in this dark, dreary, dreary place. You ate the coarse food that I ate, you, and you brought gladness to my heart. To others you've given rich gifts, but to me, to me you've given yourself. God is willing to make any accommodation to have fellowship with us, even becoming human, especially becoming human. The Son of God came as one of us, tempted in every way like us, but he did not give in. He gives us the chance to start over, to, to transform, to be transformed through forgiveness. He gives us the chance for, for reconciliation through grace. If our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology. God, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been, been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. So God sent us a savior. Jesus came to show us what faith, discipline, love, and obedience were all about. He showed us what courage and integrity are all about. That they are taking up our cross. And he showed us that by taking up his cross and bearing our sins. He calls us to follow him and to live by kingdom standards, by, by God's 
kingdom standards. Christ provided the direction we need. Who's on our side? That's the question the disciples bring to Jesus in our our worship our, our scripture today. During the history of the church there have been times when that's been a kind of important question. Are they for us or against us? Today there are so many groups who claim to be followers who tell us uh, that they, they believe how do we how do we tell them all apart? How do we tell who are the real players and or who's just playing at this faith thing? Is it the creed they espouse? Is it the amount of scripture they can quote? Jesus says the secret is to have salt in ourselves. We are called to live out our faith in such a way that, that there is no doubt who we follow. At the close of life, the question will not be how much have you gotten, but how much have you given? Not how much have you won, but how much have you done? Not how much have you saved, but how much have you sacrificed? It will be how much have you loved and served, not how much were you honored. Jesus speaks of not putting stumbling blocks in the way of others. He speaks of living a life that is not offensive to others, nor to the values of God's kingdom. A life that doesn't lead others astray. Christ provided the vision we need, turning the other cheek, loving our enemies, forgiving those who sin against us, showing no partiality, being honest, living with integrity and faithfulness, bearing our cross. These are not options for us as followers of Christ, nor are they unattainable ideals. They're simply the order of the day, the, the standards by which we live and breathe and relate to people both inside and outside the faith. The minimum daily requirements, if you will. The story is told that, that one day General Robert E. Lee was speaking in high terms of another officer when one of his men interrupted him and said, General, you do know that this man is one of your biggest opponents, uh, biggest enemies, and never misses a chance to offer ridicule to you. And Lee replied, yes, I, I understand that, but, but I was asked to give my opinion of him, not his opinion of me. The Son of God calls us to act with the same integrity no matter what's going on in the world. How we act reflects upon Christ. Christ is on our side, helping us to live out our faith. Bishop Woody White said, no matter how bad the bad news, get, bad news gets, the final word is always the good news of Jesus Christ. We are called to remember that and to seek to, to glorify God with our lives following the example that Christ has set in the direction that Christ leads us by means of the vision that Jesus has provided 
for all of us this day and all days through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior amen and amen